Thank you. It's delightful to be here, and I have now seen my official snow for the year. So <laughs> last night was lovely. Thank you. <laughs> this is great fun. I really appreciate this invitation and want to go through it very quickly. I went to various data sources, and the sources are now listed at the end of my presentation. Uh, National Household Survey, things are very, very stable. Uh, as with a lot, lot of issue, a lot of surveys, they do they lump benzos and then they ask separate questions on certain drugs. But what's important? No increase between 2009 and 2010 in the drugs that are in which they're asking, have you used these drugs non-medically? Now, in looking at the age distribution, there is, I think, one interesting thing going on. Well, two things. One, we're all getting older, so obviously the older we get, the more benzos we use. Um, but also, the higher rates, and this is a number of users, of the 18 to 25-year-old group. Uh, young kids, from my experience in the field, they love Alprazolam. Uh, those are, that's footballs, uh, all these different drugs that they like to mix with others. And I think we see it in the data right here where we have more 18 to 25 year olds over compared to benzos or clonazepam. So that's one thing to watch for. These are emergency room rates. And yes, the use of these drugs is going up. Um, again, it's alprazolam's. Now, interestingly, though, we get the, the increases in buprenorphine, but it looks like methadone, and I see it more in some of the other data, our coast data particularly, it looks like methadone is leveling off. I think it's the uh, banning of the 40 milligrams to the general public, and I think a recognition that use of methadone in pain was, was getting out of hand. So that's methadone starting to level off, which, which pleases me very much. But again, it's, it's alprazolam that is the leader in emergency room rates. I then went to the Dawn data and looked at if the patient came in and only mentioned one drug versus they came in and they mentioned that drug and a, a range of other drugs, just to see how many of these are, were having problems with just one drug. And pretty obviously, buprenorphine, they're about as likely almost to mention multiple combinations with buprenorphine as just buprenorphine by itself. Here with methadone, you see less combinations in the single drug. Alprazolam, lots of combinations down here with diazepam. We also see where they're mentioning, there is likely to mention multiple drugs as just that one drug. So again, the, the pattern of using in combination. This is benzodiazepines as a primary drug of abuse to treatment programs nationally. And it's kind of interesting because it really takes off in about 19, 2003, 2004. So suddenly we're seeing a large number of treatment admissions with a primary problem of a benzo. And then in the TEDS data, it also reports the secondary and tertiary drugs. So if their primary drug was heroin or cocaine or alcohol, uh, what was their second drug? And again, that increase of, of using benzos as their second drug. This is the National Forensic Laboratory Information System, which is run by DEA, and it's one of my best indicators because almost all of the tox labs in the nation report it to it, many medical examiners report to it, and it's that best indicator of what's out on the street that has been seized or has been found in the body of a decedent. And it's not one we look at normally, but clearly the increase in alprazolam and the, uh, some of the others are, are very low level, but again, the, the, the problems with alprazolam. Poisoning deaths, this is courtesy of Margaret Warner from uh, NCHS. This just came out recently. She ran this especially for this meeting, and my thanks to Margaret. Here are the opioid analgesics as uh, a poisoning death. But look at this. This is benzos and opioid analgesics combined. So we're beginning to get good data on that. And then heroin is much lower. 
but I thought this is going to give us a nice marker to judge how good a job we do in preventing uh, this continuation. This is looking at the intent, and obviously most people who, most deaths are unintentional, but the suicides are moving up, and I, I thought that's something else we might want to keep an eye out on, on the role of benzos in suicides. Po Texas poison control data, this is a great data set. Let me try to explain what we're doing on this one. We went in and looked at all of the methadone and buprenorphine human exposure calls to the Texas poison centers in 2011. And then I cut the data by they only called in with one substance. It was either methadone or it was buprenorphine by itself and nothing else on board versus calls for methadone plus seven other drugs or buprenorphine plus three more drugs. Um, clearly with methadone, if they're using a bunch of drugs, they're up to seven or eight drugs right here. But the, in this data set, buprenorphine is less likely to call, to call in with exposures to other drugs. But then when we look at, okay, what are they calling in? What's that second drug? Here's the picture that really concerns me, and that is buprenorphine. When they do call in with exposures to more than one drugs, it's benzos. Uh, hydrocodone with methadone in Texas, methadone, I mean, hydrocodone is a Schedule three, so uh, much more prevalent than oxycodone in Texas. But again, another picture of the combos. I want to show you the results we did a preliminary study for SAMHSA looking at deaths of patients in methadone and basically it was voluntary programs where someone died in their methadone program reported the death. We had 161 outpatient programs in 29 states. A lot of data quality because we, Samson wanted the reports within 48 hours of the death, which is nice, but you don't have medical examiner data then, so all you've got is anecdotal, for the most part, reports. But it did tell us some things. Uh, this is the basic data. They were male, they were older, 406 deaths. But of those, 22% had a benzo prescription, not necessarily from the OTP, but somebody had given them a prescription for benzos. And 20% tested positive for benzos at their last drug test at the program. So again, that role of benzos but also uh, the role of prescribed antidepressants and the SSRIs that were on board with these patients. So conclusions, opioids and benzos are up in all the data sets. It varies a little bit. The data's not consistent. Alprazolam mentions are higher than the other benzos in most of the data sets. And I think it's increasing, much more likely to be alprazolam than diazepam. It's related to aging, but I'm really worried about this 18 to 25 year old age group and, and the data with them. And the combinations with methadone and buprenorphine vary depending on which data set I look at. We need a lot more analysis as to the specific combinations of drugs, the, the age combinations. I wish I'd had time to look in more depth at the age combinations, the gender differences, uh, and the reasons for use. And they're my data sources. And thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Maxwell.